This year marks the 50th anniversary of the release of B Altitude Respect Yourself, the breakthrough album by the Staple Singers. It featured a couple of hit songs on it and was propelled by a feel good hit that spent 15 weeks on the charts and hit number one in the summer of 1972. The song, I'll Take You There. Just before the two minute mark, this R&B classic launches into what I would consider probably the most famous eight bar bass solo to exist in a pop song. Not a bass break, not a bass fill, not a bass moment. This is a featured section on a number one hit record, a bass solo my mother could sing note for note. Today, I'm going to talk about the song, the legendary bassist that played on that song, and the solo that's just about as important as the song itself. The entire backing band on this track consisted of the second incarnation of the famed Muscle Shoals rhythm section, AKA the Swampers. The bassist on this track was the amazing David Hood. As a member of the Swampers, he had already made records with Linda Ronstadt, Aretha Franklin, and Wilson Pickett, and the Muscle Shoals rhythm section were well on their way to becoming one of the legendary backing bands of the 60s and 70s. For this session, he played a heavily customized 1961 Fender Jazz Bass, which was later stolen when he was on the road with Traffic in 1973. I'll Take You There was recorded late in the summer of 1971, written by producer Al Bell. Its origins can be traced back to a song that he heard in Jamaica, a reggae song called The Liquidator by the Harry J. All-Stars. In fact, it's not a stretch to say that he actually stole the song. Listen to the intro of The Liquidator. And the bass line was also pretty much borrowed from this track. In defense of the musicians, they were played an acetate of this recording and led to believe that it was a demo. Al Bell asked him to cop a similar vibe, but to give it that Muscle Shoals sound and feel, which I believe they absolutely did. not much to the song, musically speaking. It moves between only two chords the entire time and is propelled by the incredible groove from the rhythm section. With these comments from the horn section happening, which is a trademark of Stax recordings, and an all-time performance by the great vocalist Mavis Staples. She is the match that lights the fire under this whole thing. The solo is simple, distinctive, and singable. It also serves to break up the repetition that happens in the rest of the song. According to David Hood, the solo was co-composed by the members of Muscle Shoals. In his words, we all worked together on it and it was a group effort. It was all planned out, but done quickly enough that you could almost consider it a jam. The entire solo uses only the notes of the pentatonic scale, a five note scale that's used in just about every kind of music you can think of. Here are the three things that I believe really make this solo pop. First of all, the solo starts on the third. The soloist's best friend, probably the strongest note in the chord. Also dig how the keyboard is now taking over the bass line underneath the bass solo. Number two, like the rest of the song, it's very thematic. 
that four and one rhythm keeps coming back over and over again. Third, it uses the sound of the root, in this case, to bring it back home at the end of the phrase. We usually associate root notes with playing bass, but nothing ties the end of a solo phrase together like coming back to that tonic to give it some sense of resolution. Whether you're listening to this song on the radio or playing it in a wedding band, I can't imagine it existing without this iconic bass solo. 50 years, two chords, and the truth. And we're still talking about it. That's good music. Big props to the great David Hood and only one track from a Hall of Fame bass playing career. Check him out.